Hey, so here's a quick demo on how to do this. Um, and so the question here is uh, how to use HTTP URLs as a data source. And what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna use Builder's API action to take this JSON, the, re the endpoint that returns JSON here, that URL. We're gonna use that and use the API action to set the value of a grid. And that grid is gonna repeat another page based on this data. So let me just start out. First, first let me click on this and so you can see that's what it will return. And I'm just gonna copy this URL. So I have a, a page here, a project and a, a home page and a row page set up. And what that is is the home page has a grid list on it. So I went to elements and I dropped grid list here on. And then in this grid list, I set the row page to this row page. So that's all I really have. The row page just has a text box on it. It's nothing else. It's not set to anything. Um, so what this grid list does is that's going to repeat the row page based on whatever data the grid list is, is bound to. And so what we're actually going to do is we're going to create a flow that when the page loads, queries that URL, gets that data, and binds it into this grid list so that it can repeat whatever's on this page, which will set up to read the data uh, you know, that's coming through. So this sounds like a lot, but it's actually pretty easy. So on the grid list page, I'm gonna come up to flows and I'm gonna create a flow for get data. And that's just for organization. You could do this directly on page binding if you want, but I'm gonna create a new flow called get data and I'm gonna search for the action and I'm gonna search API. There's one action here, API um, get data and set it in an element data. And there's another one for get API data and set it in a variable. Because I'm actually looking for this bindings array, that's what I actually want to set into my grid list. I'm going to use the variable one. But depending on the API that you're using, sometimes you can use this get and set in element data and directly set the API response rate into data as a shortcut. But for now, we'll use this variable one. And so the way it works is the, the first uh, input argument here, URL, I'm going to paste that URL that I copied from here. And then I'm just gonna type this uh, content type. This is for a, an API header. For the header name, I'm gonna type content type. And for the value, I'm gonna type application slash JSON. And the reason I'm doing that is actually because I just helped someone else on another support request where I had to do that to make it work. So I don't know if that's universal or not. Uh, if it is, I'm gonna do more testing. And if it is, I'm gonna build that into this action. So in the future, if you're watching this, you may not need to type that, but it also if it doesn't work, you may need to type this. So that's just a, a header for content type application JSON. You leave this method as get, post body you can leave blank. The target page for the variable is the home page here. And then the variable to set response data, that's like the actual variable name. I'm just gonna make something up. So I'll do, this will be, URL API data like that. And then, so what that's going to do, is it's going to query to the URL. It's going to get that JSON data and it's going to set it as this API variable. And then I'm going to add in another action called set value where I'm actually going to set the value. I'm going to select the element grid list. So I'm setting the value of this grid list to, I'm going to come instead of from text, I'm going to come from variable url api data and i'm going to add a path here and this is where it's a little tricky but for this specific um, example it the json that it gets has a head and then results and then the results is what we're really looking for we're looking for results that bindings so what i actually want to set into the grid list is that array so that it repeats so i'm actually going to set the variable we created dot results dot binding with an s so i can do that with a path and i can say dot results dot bindings oops and so that's down there and so basically i'm saying query the endpoint get that as a variable set into the grid that variable dot results dot bindings so it is a little complex there and we're working to make all that interface a little bit easier and a little bit um so you don't have to know as much going in, but that is how you'd actually do that. 
And so right now this is all set up. This would work and this would repeat. It would create for this page. It would repeat this bindings thing here. So we'd have S1 and S4 fields for both of those. And it would be like S1.type field and S1.value field. And they're just variables that we can use on this page. So actually now that I'm saying that, I might not even go into the details on this, um, you know, as far into this, except to say that on this text box, for example, if you want that bound to one of those variables in data, you can come from variable. So you'll have a variable that's like for each page, that's like S1 dot URI, I think was one, right? So S1, oh, type, oops. So you'd have S1 dot type, right? And then since we're looping through this bindings, for, it would have this first page, it would show URI, URI in that text box field because it's bound to here. The next one, it would show URI. Oh, these are gonna all be URI. So you might not need that, but um, you get the idea. If I would have done value instead of type, it would, it would display you know, that whole value. So that, that's how you actually make it do what you want. It's completely open-ended. And it's not actually a data collection. It's just like whatever's in that JSON is a variable that you can then use. Um, and so I think the last thing to do would just be to test this. Actually, let me make this something that we can see a little better. Binding, binding, and then let's just test. Oh, oh, the last thing I need to do is I created a flow for get data. I just need to trigger that on page load or page binding. So I'll nest get data into here and then preview. I'm just going to set it to the home page. There it is. So it looks a little crazy because I was just doing this on the fly, but it's looping through this data and displaying this s1.value. And actually maybe I could change it to s4 if these are all different so it's a little easier to read. So this, if we bind it instead to s4.value, oops. And then refresh. So it's doing the API call in the background right now. And then you can see each of these is getting that value. So hopefully that wasn't too much. That was actually a little more complicated than I thought going in because I just did this live. But you just need the grid list. You need the API action inside of a flow. And then you need the binding on this row page. And yeah, you, bind, you set the row page into the grid list under properties. You set something to trigger this API action and the rest pretty much is taken care of. All right, hopefully that wasn't too confusing. I, I apologize if it was. If you do have questions, I'd be happy to clarify any of that. Um, just reply in the same thread here.